What is going on everybody? Welcome back to part two of the random terror map game. It was, it was a pretty hectic part one because we just got so much done. It will probably slow down a bit this turn. We'll also probably see ourselves... I don't think the game's on quick speed, is it? It is not. It's on standard. I was going to say we might get towards late eras pretty early, but that won't be the case. But immediately, Rome declaring war on the Netherlands. Quick, anyone who picked the Netherlands maybe wants to... Go, go flip their pick but saying that the Dutch have just entered the Renaissance era which seems fairly early but I guess it's turned 100 that's probably normal for these deity games but yeah Rome <laughs> that's pretty confident isn't it they're sending a settler in with their invasion party there is of course also the war out this way and we can see Siam using their boats alone to grab this coastal Mayan city so the Mayans they look really good at the start when they first invaded France and then Egypt came and wrecked them, and now Siam coming in too. That is going to be pretty messy. Siam's going to be very good out on this western side of the map. And then there's my pick, Egypt, who's probably going to die in this episode just because I picked them. So, you know, the expectations are low. <laughs> we can't be disappointed. Either way, Rome begins the invasion of Rotterdam, but the Dutch putting up a pretty solid defence. All of a sudden, this doesn't look as terrifying, but I say that as Rotterdam gets dropped down to no help. Ravenna is also settled along the river from Denmark and we'll see yeah Rotterdam will probably be Roman next turn there we go before I even got the words out of my mouth Rotterdam becomes a Roman city and we could see more Dutch cities Groningen here kind of exposed maybe Nijmegen as well that's how you say that one could both go to Rome I reckon maybe not Amsterdam but then that would obviously leave the, what remains of the Netherlands pretty exposed. Ethiopia with the Notre Dame, which gives them a lot of happiness, which gives you freedom to expand quite nicely. Bit disappointed they've spammed out so many triremes in a tiny little lake, but you know, the AI will never learn. <laughs> That's just so ridiculous. Um, they don't actually have a coastal city that they, they may as well have built no boats. Like, there's no barbarians, there is no purpose for these triremes. <laughs> They, they're not like protecting trade or anything like they could have a cargo ship to Panama City and it would have been fine I don't maybe they don't know that but it shows you that even though this it just confuses me this AI I couldn't play in this game like they would have killed me like they would have killed me quicker than France I, I'll admit that that's fair enough but uh, but they just do some useless stuff it makes me just feel even worse <laughs> Ethiopia completes the Petra and Rome and the Netherlands have pieced out so that's the end of that and Groningen was taken in that peace deal so that's another nice city for Rome who've also added Eretium in the south so they are starting to grow a little bit as well as Siam takes another city off of the Mayans they might be next I think although Mongolia did go after the Netherlands again and will probably take Utrecht in the coming couple of turns Mongolia added another city towards Poland as well this is crazy. I, I fear for some of these smaller sieves, the Denmarks of the world. Poland is huge as well, and they're just continuing to expand. I feel like going tradition just wasn't the right path in this game. That's for sure. We'll see. Utrecht here, though. Could fall to the Mongols. Rome's turn. Mongolia. Egypt. Oh, they came close there. Right. Egypt and Poland teaming up on Siam. This is interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Egypt. Okay. Yeah, bringing in Poland could at least put pressure on Siam. Might not be the guarantee, but there we go. Hagia Sophia is another wonder for the Ethiopians. They're just sat in the corner, minding their own business, getting all those wonders, all those bonuses. We talked last episode about the defensive bonuses they managed to amass. Imagine if they got the Great Wall as well. And a city just fell, and I completely ignored that it happened. Sorry, where was that? Ah... <laughs> was somewhere out there it was Mongolia taking Utrecht wasn't it yes it was there we go Mongolia gets that which just leaves Breda Amsterdam oh and they have this other city so they're not completely done yet but Ethiopia's now got a f potential settler here for number five which could put them a bit close to Mongolia we'll see and I mean I don't see anyone yet but caravels should be possible sooner rather than later and China who have been under the radar have added another city as well yeah, caravels should be possible fairly soon. We saw the Dutch get into the Renaissance era. So I don't think it's a million miles away that we see some sieves enter that deep ocean. But it's not quite that time yet. It's still a bit early. Actually, I say that the Dutch do have a caravel. I 
there it is. I don't know, maybe Denmark does too, and not, oh no, they have coastal cities, but maybe they can't build a caravel that quickly. Either way, the Dutch definitely have one, so that, that's at least something. Amsterdam is under attack. I don't know how they managed to get here. <laughs> they walked past this, this, walked past Breda, got bombarded, and then just kept going. You gotta respect it. <laughs> Maybe they don't want all of them. Maybe their happiness is restricting them a tiny bit from taking all of these cities. That is quite funny. But we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, what else have we got going on? Mongolia slowly adding cities around this way, but not as aggressively. It's like Rome and Denmark were thinking about declaring war on each other or something crazy here. Those Danish units are not in a good place if this war breaks out. Although they will be up against trebuchets, which they can the pikemen could do well against. This could get very messy very quickly if it breaks out. Tulum has been captured by Egypt. That was the city, yeah, down there. So at the moment, Egypt's free to pick up that city. I don't know if they'll do too much, but it might you know, make just Siam think. They look a bit overextended. Poland is obviously a threat as well who look pretty pretty strong the Danish are just they don't care do they? they're just grabbing whatever land they can at this point going for anything they can get their their hands on respect to them for that I guess as Rome adds another city they will start encroaching towards China if they continue on this path and they have another settler here two more so yeah it's getting very aggressive in the settling from some of the civs this continent is filling up very quickly all of a sudden there was a lot of open space here previously and we now have a world's congress which I embargoing city-states actually matters now that's a bit of a problem um, hmm world's fair I'm gonna try and impact it as minimum as possible but um, yeah <laughs> I'll try my best Denmark versus the Netherlands oh that's what they're up to yeah, I was a bit unsure where the Danish units were going, but that makes sense. What, look at them, they're just not attacking this city. They're just walking past to Amsterdam. <laughs> this is such an interesting tactic, I guess. There's literally a road here, just go this way. <laughs> what? Are, they didn't even attack Breda. What are they doing? This is pretty wild. Either way, Ethiopia adds a city on the coast, and Rome puts one right in Ethiopia's face as well. Oof. That could get interesting. That could get spicy um, between those two. We will do the info addicts at 150, which is 25 turns, so five minutes or so away. But we'll see. Will everyone still be alive then? The Mayans seem to have been spared. I can't remember. Did they? They didn't peace out with Siam, did they? They are still technically under attack, but they just now have Egypt and Poland technically alongside them. China has survived with Nanjing here for now. They have some trade routes which may be helping them out on staying alive. A lot of Chokanus as well. <laughs> the one good thing they got in their spawn was King Solomon's mine. They haven't even reached it yet. That is pretty sad. As Denmark squeezes in some more territory. And there it is, Rome v Denmark. And this is just going to be interesting because there are units all over the place for these two. Uh, this is going to be messy. I don't know how this is going to play out. Copenhagen's also pretty hard to get to behind a mountain. But look at all these Danish units right here. There's a mix of Danish and Roman units here. So this is going to be probably a bit of a bloodbath between those two. As Mongolia grabs Himeji Castle. Poland is adding more cities all the time. Even within their own territory at this point. Wow. Um, but yeah, I don't know what Mongolia is doing here. Apart from giving the rest of the world a chance, because they, they should have taken both of these cities ages ago. <laughs> but they have added another one now here, up towards the Danish and Rome. Seems to have cleared this area out, but there's a lot of Danish units north of Ravenna. Never mind, I spoke too soon for the Mayans. Siam has grabbed the city of Tikal, which leaves the Mayans with one more city. But Poland is moving along the coast. This is very bizarre come all the way down here while at war as well but there we go another city for Poland and Gdynia here they are just spamming out those settlers and they are now attacking Siam and the capital's there pretty exposed that would be pretty wild if they lost that pretty annoying for them I'd imagine oh Rome's put another settler in Ethiopia trapping them in the corner oh no Rome is all over it Circe here as well 
Chengdu though is another Chinese city, so they're not they're not going to let Rome take all this territory. They're going to push back a little bit as they complete the Angkor Wat. And Beijing with the Hanging Gardens. I'm going to hazard a guess is the biggest city in the world in the tundra. That is quite something. They do have some technically they have some rivers here, so that's kind of helped them a lot. But still, 20 population in Beijing. That is quite impressive. Denmark and Rome, peace out for nothing either way. Which, yeah, that was kind of just a mess. Both of them lost a lot of units for no real outcome there. Poland grabs Machu Picchu in, I think, in this city, which is quite impressive because it's only at five pop. So it's probably been building it since they, like, settled it. They have more settlers heading down here, as do Egypt now have some coming upwards. What a chaotic chaotic game. Siam pieces out with the Mayans, so they will survive with just Palenka as their capital. Has anyone gone out yet to discover the new continents? It can't be too far away. We saw the Dutch with caravels, so I'm pretty sure if they wanted to, they could build them, like, surely. The Dutch can't be, like, miles ahead. They weren't doing anything special, and Denmark was ahead of them quite a bit on tech at one point, so that seems unlikely. Well, there is some city-states out here, pretty strong, but there's also ancient ruins, which could be pretty powerful if you're picking up those first late in the game. That's an extra bonus for sort of being the first civs to explore the new world with scouts. So you can get free techs, you can get unit upgrades, and at this point, those will be pretty good upgrades. Egypt did add another city here towards China. Amsterdam has finally fallen to the Danes. It didn't go to the Mongols. It took them so long that it falls into Danish hands, which is a bit interesting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Two more settlers there for Rome as well. Well, so we've got Zanzibar and China now allies. Interesting. We'll see where these Roman settlers are going. It looks like one's going to go here and be a coastal city. And another one down here should keep China contained, sadly. It would have been cool if China came out of here really strong, but yeah, there you go, Satricum here, that's Rome's coast, another coastal city, I mean, they only have Rome as another one, but there you go, they might build some ships, and we'll see where this one goes, maybe onto that lake, which would allow them to trade with China, which wouldn't be, like, a terrible idea, if you, I don't know if they'll ever be friends, because this is just hyper-aggressive, they didn't do it in the end, but, you know, cargo ship routes in here would have been very safe, easy way to make money from Shanghai. And Breda does fall into Mongolia's hands. So we're and they've squeezed another city in here. They are really maximizing the space. They've added two over here as well, I notice. Um, so Mongolia looking nice and big. Poland is also trying to get as much out of this as they can. They're getting all the way towards Egypt now. Set them and another one's on its way. Then another one. Oh my goodness. They have built walls here, which might just help them. These triremes can't really help, but the Trebuchet and Galeas should be doing enough. Zanzibar has now joined that war, and Ethiopia. They built a lot of wonders in part one. They've just added the leaning tower of Pisa, as well as a couple of new cities that weren't... I think this one's been there for a while, but I don't... That one's the first time we've seen that one. So they are still growing at an interesting rate. But yeah, you've got to look at the number of cities some of these civs have. It's crazy. Mongolia, Poland... Even Siam's adding some around the coast. We'll see though. We're, we're getting there. Five turns away from 150. It looks like the Netherlands will be eliminated before then. They get a peace deal with the Dutch. But Rome and Mongolia now defend it, de descending, on, uh, yeah, descending on their final city. But it's not really descending or ascending. They're going sideways. But if you turn the map sideways, they're descending. Or ascending if you're going up. Whatever. It made sense in my head. Rome should take this, I think, because they go first, probably. Um, and that will be a good gain for them, because they are probably the next Civ that's going to have to stand up. Them or Denmark, who are going to have to sort of fight Mongolia. But yeah, Rome has emerged pretty well here from the weakness of the Netherlands. And there it is, the Dutch. The Dutch. The Romans do grab that city, and that is the end of the Dutch in this game, which is a shame. But Rome now starting to look... A good healthy size as Denmark adds a city here as well. Just going to provoke Rome that little bit more. <laughs> Just going to go poking with a stick again. 
it seems to be all Denmark's doing. How on earth Poland didn't go after them is beyond me. I thought that was a guarantee. Egypt and the Maya peace out, mainly because the Maya died to Egypt. <laughs> that's well, that's why Palenque has fallen to the Egyptians. So there we go. China grabs the Globe Theatre, which is another nice wonder. But now they are under attack from Rome and Egypt. They should be okay in the short term, but that could be a problem. They've grabbed another city here, Egypt, and potentially another one. Just bef just in time, because Poland was about to arrive with a couple of settlers. And then here we go, final turn before 150. Let's see what's happening. Oh my goodness, it's so dark outside. <laughs> I, started this, I started the last episode, which I recorded just before this one, and it was light. And I just had my little lamp on on my desk, and now I'm like sat in the dark apart from the lamp. <laughs> it's, it's only half three. <laughs> what's going on? Mongolia declares war on Rome. So that is huge. So that's probably a good time to go into the info addicts. I'm just going to save it. I don't know. It's called Terror Random Game, I think. It, oh, Random Terror Game. <laughs> Close enough. I'm just going to save it in case anything happens. But we should be all fine. We are. Who is that? Just pulling away in score. It is Ethiopia. Dang. I mean, it's not, not a huge category, but there we go. So here we go. Population of the eight remaining sieves. We've lost three now already. So... <laughs> quite a fast paced game Rome leads the way currently at 12.4 million ahead of the Mongolians then it's Ethiopia and Poland down at 8 7.9 oh just missing out is China above Siam that's a surprise Denmark and Egypt's in last wow okay fair enough crop yield Mongolia leads Rome then Poland Siam Egypt Ethiopia Denmark and China I have a feeling Mongolia and Rome might top a lot of these stats, but they're about to fight each other in a probably a brutal war, so it's going to be... They're going to contain each other, whereas in the West there's still some fighting to be done. Poland, Siam, then Egypt, Ethiopia, Denmark, and China at the bottom. Production, again, Mongolia just ahead of Rome, then Poland, Siam, Egypt, China, Ethiopia, and Denmark. Biggest economy, again, Mongolia, then Poland, Rome, Siam, Ethiopia, Egypt, China, and Denmark. Land area, Mongolia leads Rome, then Poland, Siam, Egypt, Ethiopia, Denmark, and China. Biggest armies again, Mongolia, then Rome, Siam, Poland, Denmark, Ethiopia, Egypt, China, me. <laughs> then apparently the Mayans and Netherlands have some units I'll delete in the break. Um, after the episode, social policies, Poland, as expected, leading the way, then Ethiopia. Then a bit of a drop to Siam, Mongolia, Egypt, and like everyone else, Rome. A couple of 11s as well. Right, happiness. So they all they're all not all managing. Both Mongolia and Rome fighting each other, yet in the negatives. Everyone else is just above positives, so that's fine. China in particular at 37. Net gold, somewhat already losing money. Denmark there I saw. Most cities there. Mongolia has 20. 15 for Rome and Poland. 13 for Egypt, 12 for Siam, 8 for Ethiopia, Denmark, and China. Does do you reckon that adds up to 100? 35, 50, 63. 75, 83, could be embarrassing myself, 91, 97, I think, if, if I've got that right. Nearly 100. Science, Mongolia, leading Poland, then Rome, Siam, China, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Denmark. Of course, the more cities you have, the more science you need to get a tech, so that doesn't guarantee Mongolia is leading in technologies, which did we just skip over? I think we did, yeah. Poland and Mongolia, though, are tied on 36, then it's 35 for Rome, Ethiopia, and Siam. 34 for the Netherlands, 33 for the Danish, 32 for China, 31 for Egypt, and 30 for the Mayans. Right, now back to where we were. Culture, Poland leads the way, ahead of Siam, then Egypt, Ethiopia, Mongolia, Rome, China, and Denmark. I have no idea how the Dutch are making nine culture per term while being dead, but Im impressive. Ethiopia has eight wonders, ahead of China on four. Three for Siam, Denmark, two for Poland, Egypt, and Mongolia, and the one for Rome as it stands. Do, 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 do we need influence? None's influential. Okay, great works. Four for Siam, Ethiopia, Mongolia, three for Denmark and Egypt, two for China and Poland, one for Rome. Trade routes. Six for Ethiopia and Poland, five for Rome. I guess it depends who who's at war, but three for Denmark and Mongolia, two for China, only one for Egypt, none for Siam. I guess they're at war with all their neighbours, so that kind of explains that. And then tourism, they're all sort of slowly starting to get started. But we won't focus too much, because we have got a big war here. Rome, B Mongolia. Mongolia immediately putting a new settlement down. 
right on the front lines. This is going to be a big battle between, I think it was one and, I can't remember if Rome was second or third, but they were pretty much the same number. So, um, but yeah, Mongolia did have 20k more, but again, a lot of, look, there's a lot of boats up here, so it's not exactly all of them going at it. Rome is fighting China as well, though. And they have grabbed a city here, which is again not coastal. <laughs> Never mind. No trade coming out of that one either. I guess they could send a caravan, but that's about it. Egypt is definitely expanding, despite their low population. Poland did beat them, though, to settling there. And that means their settlers are pretty vulnerable to China if they're going to continue to probe around here for some land to settle. But yeah, I was very surprised that Egypt was below China. I know, obviously, a jump, the number, bigger, bigger number is better. Like, you know, 20 for new, which there are a lot of new people, actually. I've just worked this out, like, by myself. I, I don't, I've not looked at, like, the formula for what it is or anything. But basically, the difference between going from 22 to 23 in the info addicts is much bigger than the difference between going from 1 to 2. Even though it's a one pop increase, this might be like 10 times the size. It is kind of relative, not relative. The opposite of, I don't know, what words to use to describe it. It's like, is it log in maths? I, I don't know if it's like a log, but it, it's like bigger, right? It's a bigger jump each time, which is why Beijing being at 22, well, if you added all these numbers of pop, it's way less than what Egypt has, but Egypt has way less population. Ethiopia declares war on Rome as well. This could be a crumbling time for Rome. These AIs, they never get it. They just they never know who to stop. And then they end up teaming up and they're just helping Mongolia. I am going to... I have no idea what to put. I guess it doesn't matter. The AIs would kind of vote no if not, right? Like If I put standing army tax, they'd probably just vote no. Oh, I'm just going to unembargo copper. That's fine. We can just do that over and over again. And that won't affect the game too much. Rome has themselves declared war of Denmark, which I don't think is smart, but, you know, whatever. Oh, okay, that helps a little bit, Poland going after them as well, but Poland's a bit elsewhere occupied too. This is like a world war that is just in in 900 AD with some musket men. It is pretty random. What is going on? This is just hecticness. There is still no caravels. I'm so lost at how the Dutch had one. It makes no sense. Everyone else should be able to have them. I guess, I mean, Egypt's going to get this island, but that didn't take having a caravel. Maybe there is just one, like one random one somewhere, and we've missed it. But it doesn't look like it. I think everyone's just so involved in war that exploring is not exactly on their mind. That could be the case. I mean, could you imagine if Denmark got to this northern island and survived for like another hundred turns while they just constantly settled up here? They would be a contender after that. At the moment, it is hard to root for them, because they are probably between the top three sieves of those info addicts, Rome, Mongolia, and Poland. But if Denmark came and got all those islands, things could definitely change. Poland should grab Tunsberg here, which will be the first casualty for Denmark of this war. Looks like China did kill that Egyptian settler, or it escaped and made it all the way over here in a short period of time. Could have done, because it just... Oh no, it didn't, but a different unit just moved all the way over there, so maybe it could have slipped away and found somewhere new to go. I'm guessing it's probably going to head over here now, or down here. We'll see where it ends up. And there's other cities, Chengdu. Rome's added a city here, right on the tip. That could eventually one day be important, because it may give them control of the crossing from north to south, and that could impact China a lot, but... Potentially not. Denmark does have some caravels, as do Poland, but they are inland. Poland now has a rifleman as well, which is pretty good. Pretty good going. And so far, this Mongolian Roman front has, if it lets me scroll, has not really led to too much damage to the cities. Rome just having enough to defend, but Rotterdam looks pretty open here. Denmark is going straight for the heart as well. We'll see how that goes. And you have Ethiopia, who may be given a clean run here as well, in the south. So Rome, doing a very good job, I would say, to have not lost anything in the first 11 turns of this war. Considering they're fighting ever, they're fighting all four of their neighbours, China, Ethiopia, Denmark, and Mongolia. And they're doing a good job, as Denmark does lose the city of Tunsberg here, and I don't think Poland will be giving that up. That will just stay as part of their empire now. 
Genghis Khan just entered the industrial era. Okay. They do have a lot of caravels, so maybe we'll see them start to head on out and explore a bit more. World's Fair is only 38% done, but Poland completes the Red Fort. And that is going to be it for a wild episode 2. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I hope you've enjoyed the fast-paced action. It can be a little different. It's a speed up from obviously we've just come from an AI game that was very slow towards the end into this rampant pace. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Do be sure to uh, leave a like and a comment if you have. If you haven't, of course, do leave feedback as well. Ideally not be mean, but you know, you know, leave, leave some feedback. That's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.